Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about mastering again, answering the question, should you master your music at different loudness levels for different platforms? The issue is all the major streaming platforms seem to have different loudness targets and requirements. And should you just be making one master to distribute to all of them? Or should you try to make lots of different individual masters one for each streaming service. So as usual, there are timestamps and chapters in this video. I'm going to give some sort of guidelines and back it up with the discussion, but you can navigate the video to the part that you need. So let's get right into it. Before I set out the guidelines, I just want to talk about the loudness metering I use in my studio. So I exclusively use the Yulin loudness meter tools. I've been using their desktop app for many years and trusting it, but recently I've moved over to the new iOS app, the Yulin loudness meter Lite. I use this in my studio. It syncs up automatically with my DAW and gives me all of this loudness information in real time. When you use a, a loudness meter like this, it removes the guesswork. Um, it just tells you where your true peak loudness is, where your integrated loudness is, and it means you can be compliant with lots of different platforms very easily. So I've left some more information in the description sharing those tools that I use. There's both free and premium versions of those. But now, Let's get right into the discussion. Firstly, I do recommend just making one master for all of the platforms, but I'll share some information about how you can be compliant with all of them at the same time. But I do recommend making a second master for use with some social media posts. And again, I'll talk more about this and why it's different. A lot of the confusion around this topic comes from all of the platforms asking for slightly different numbers or targets for various loudnesses. But the reality is they're all focused on the same two things. And this is true peak loudness and average loudness. And I'll explain why the platforms care about these and I'll explain what they are as well. So the first is true peak loudness. What is this and why do any streaming platforms care about it? Well, true peak loudness is simply the maximum loudness of your mastered file. You would normally set and control your true peak loudness as the final stage on your mastering limiter. It would usually be described as the ceiling or the maximum loudness on your limiter. So I've described what it is, but why on earth do platforms care about it? The reason is that when you upload your beautiful pristine wave file through your distributor to all of these different online streaming services, they turn that lossless audio into a lossy format. They have to encode it into a compressed format. And this encoding process raises the maximum level of the audio, or it usually does. So many of the platforms ask that you keep your signal below minus one dB true peak to give that encoding process space. You can, of course, set your ceiling higher and you can push your true peaks higher. Many professionals do that and they do it successfully. But the issue is you lose control over knowing what they're going to sound like when they're compressed. So there's just a higher likelihood that they could clip. And I would recommend that if you do want to push the true peaks higher, just make sure that you have a great listening environment and you can check your mastered files in these compressed formats just to make sure that you're happy with it. And this is the type of testing that a professional mastering engineer would do on your behalf. So I hope that I've made a good case for keeping your true peaks below minus one dB, but now we need to talk about integrated loudness because this is the second thing all of these streaming platforms care about because they want to make sure that each track plays back at a relatively similar volume on these streaming services. Now, this isn't the case. If you've ever been on Spotify, you'll notice that each track does actually play back louder or quieter than the next, and they are struggling with trying to make these tracks play back at the same level. But I should quickly define what they're actually looking for when measuring the average loudness. And they're measuring integrated LUFS or LUFS, and this is a measure of the average over the whole program material. Now, what confuses a lot of people here is that this is the average or integrated LUFS level. And you can see on this master here, you can have a short term loudness that's significantly higher and it could be a bit more quiet in the verses, but overall it could average out at a level that the platforms are asking for. It's important to remember that these loudness targets are the platform's own reference levels and they're not targets that you should specifically be aiming for as an engineer. The best way to master is to have a great balance, make sure that your stereo image is good, make sure that the chorus has the right sort of impact. And then once you've got everything sounding good, 
just make sure that your average loudness is at least up to the requirements these platforms are asking for. Usually if your average or integrated loudness is sitting between say minus 12 and minus 16, you're not gonna run into any problems. And this is also a level that's very achievable for an independent artist or a hobbyist to achieve on their own just with simple compression and limiting. Again, you can push it much louder than this and many professionals do of course with great results, but if you're gonna push the average loudness up, it's good to make sure that you have a great monitoring environment and that you can really hear the differences that sort of bad limiting and over compression can make to a mix. But I know that it's also a sound that a lot of people like. Perhaps surprisingly, I've found that you can run into more problems when your master is actually too quiet because while most of the streaming services will simply turn your music down overall if you're a bit too loud, if your music's too quiet, it, you, they usually really struggle to pull the music back up. They either have to apply their own limiting, which sounds terrible, or they just simply can't apply enough gain to make your music sound competitive. So it's just best to make sure that you're mastering sort of along the same lines as the genre you're working in, or trying to get a really nice musical sound and not really trying to aim for any particular target. Before I lay out the final guidelines that I follow for every master, I wanna talk about just a couple more things. And the first is that most music distributors don't even let you submit different files to different streaming services. So if you're an independent artist and you don't even have this ability to upload different files, it's best to not stress about it. But the final point here is something you do have control over. And this is that while you can do one master for all of these streaming sites, I would highly recommend making a separate master for your promotional material that you use on different social media sites, especially Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. So if you make a second master that has a much lower true peak ceiling, so set the ceiling of your limiter to at least minus two decibels, if you use this master just for those short sort of promotional snippets on those platforms, it will sound significantly better. Those platforms are dealing with so much information, especially video content, that the audio tends to suffer. They tend to encode it really badly into the most compressed formats they can. And I've found in testing that even one dB of headroom wasn't enough to stop the clipping. So if you are using uh, sort of your music on there for promotion, potentially advertising for a new single or an album, I would highly recommend putting the true peaks down. So taking that discussion into account, I'm gonna lay out all the actionable steps you can follow to get a great sounding master. And these are steps that I follow as well. So the first thing is make one master for all of the streaming services, but also make a second social media master with a lower true peak ceiling. When mastering, the true peak loudness is probably the most important thing. Keep your true peak loudness below minus one dB if you want to have predictable encoding behavior and prevent clipping. Again, you can go much louder than that, but you're just going to introduce more clipping and you'll have less control over that final product that the listener will actually hear. Depending on the genre, you can get the integrated loudness up to between minus 12 and minus 16 LUFS integrated without negatively affecting the music. I think this is achievable for almost any independent artist or hobbyist. This level of loudness you can achieve without completely crushing your mix. And if you want to go further, which many professionals do, you can of course do that. Just make sure that you're listening to your music on lots of different sound systems and really listening out for the sort of bad compression artifacts that can occur. Following on from that last point, try to avoid overly dynamic music. And I know this will be a controversial point, but by overly dynamic, I mean huge changes in volume between a verse or a chorus or having a kick drum that's just incredibly loud compared to the rest of the mix. Try to master, you know, on a similar line to other genres that you're working with. And if you're being experimental, try that with, you know, sound design and space in a mix. Don't have a verse that's super quiet and a chorus that's really loud because the music streaming sites don't really know what to do with this and they tend to just turn the whole thing down until the verse is really quiet. But I know this isn't really a problem for most people. And as a final note, make sure that you keep backups of the original dynamic mix and your master and your social media masters. You never know when a song, you know, when you'll need to work on it again in the future. Maybe something becomes really popular, it needs to be remixed, or there are new loudness targets and you want to remaster things. For now, uh, I know that the loudness standards are not gonna move that much in the next year or two, but they certainly will have changed completely in 10 or 20 or even 30 years, and it's good to have a sort of backup of all of your music in case you need it 
one day. I really do hope this video was helpful and that I added something to this discussion, but what I want to remind people is this is a discussion. There's no absolute right or wrong, and I know that these targets keep changing. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments. We can keep this discussion going. I'd really like to talk to all of you about this, your strategies, what's giving you good results on different streaming services. And I'm absolutely happy to be challenged on any of the stuff I say, of course. So do feel free to comment down below and we can have a chat. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.